Ahoy there! Captain Benzie here, coming at you with another video for Infinite Lagrange. This video has been sponsored by NetEase, and if you're worried about how that impacts my content in terms of ethics and whether or not you can trust me, I have put out a statement regarding this on the Catskull Discord, so do be sure to check that out. Anyway, in today's video, we're going to be having a look at something a little bit different to usual. Now, I like to normally put out tutorial-esque content where I talk about this is how this system works and here's how you can do these things. I talk about how to engage in Infinite Lagrange. In today's video though, I want to wax lyrical about one of my favourite ships. It's a frigate and it's probably not the one you're thinking of. It's not the Reliat. We're going to be talking about the Carillion Recon. This ship, I think, gets unfairly dismissed by an awful lot of people. I watch a lot of content for Infinite Lagrange, and I speak to quite a few people out there who play the game quite a bit, and when it comes to ranking all the different frigates, the Carillion Recon always seems to come up short at the very bottom of the stack. And so today, I wanted to talk about why I think you are massively underrating the Carillion Recon. Now before we jump in, if you do enjoy the video, please let me know. Subscribe to the channel, ding the notification bell to make sure you get all notifications, set it to all. Leave me a like, leave me a comment down below. If you want to go the extra mile to support this channel, we do have both a Redbubble merchandise store and a Patreon page where you can pledge to support and learn all about my life here in Africa whilst earning some really cool exclusive merch. Anyway, all that said and done then, let's talk about the Carillion Recon. Or rather, before we talk about the Carillion Recon, let's take a sidebar and talk about the FG300. Now, when you first start your journey in Infinite Lagrange, you are pretty much guaranteed that one of the first ships you're going to be unlocking is the FG300 armor type and recon type. And as you go further on in the game, you may unlock the Carillion Recon fairly early on. It's one of the ones that you can get in the dedicated early boxes. Now if we have a look at the FG300 Recon, because you've probably unlocked this first, you'll see that it's got 11,150 uh, HP, 5 armor, 1,100 propulsion, and if we have a look at how much it can carry, it's got a storage capacity of 2,200. So, you have this already, then you unlock the Carillion, and you look at the Carillion Recon stats, and you say, well it's okay, it's the same speed, it's considerably lower HP, it's similar armor, and it's actually got less storage capability. Okay, yeah, the Carillion Recon has much higher firepower over here, especially against anti-ships and things, but who's sending combat, uh, recon ships into combat? Recon ships are what I'm using to go exploring. They're what I'm using to liaise with trading posts and things like that. So the fact that this has less armor, it costs more, all of this, what really is the purpose of it? And I... I'll admit, that was me. I looked at the Carillion Recon and I said, this ship looks awesome. And then I looked through its stats and went, I don't get what I'm supposed to do with it. Then, as I started playing more and more Infinite Lagrange, people started talking about the FG300 Armoured Frigate, and this being one of the best frigate tanks in the game, and I, I completely agree with that. It is a really good frigate tank. Look at the armour. This, okay, is upgraded. You know, I've gone in and I've done a load of armour upgrades here. The only other upgrades I've done on the FG300A are the one that helps it shoot down missiles to intercept. It's not a great amount, but hey, it's less damage taken, theoretically. But we've got an armor here of 12,265 HP and 24 armor. That's huge. Comparing that to the Carillion's 9,100 odd HP and only 5 armor with upgrades, you might think, well, okay, this is definitely the better choice of the two. After all, it's got a survivability grade of A, it's equipped with reinforced armor, outstanding survivability, and if we actually have a look at the combat roles, front, uh, front row and reinforced armor, this is definitely, on paper, a tanking frigate, and it is, it works really well. People will tell you, build a whole load of FG300 armors, put them at the front of your fleets, and they will absorb all the firepower for the rest of your frigates. Then I started looking at the Carillion. Again, I said I really like the look of this ship. It's a really cool looking ship. I love the outline and the profile of it. Um, how can I fit this in a fleet? Surely it's got to have some purpose. I don't believe that it's just flat out worse as a recon ship than the FG300 recon, and it's worse at everything else than all the other ships you've already got. Then I noticed one thing looking at its info. Front row, so it's sort of a tanky frigate then, and it's got high evasion. Now, evasion is one of these stats that you, you don't get to see it anywhere. There is no way that tells you exactly what high evasion actually means. What is high evasion? What's low evasion? But as I got looking at the different upgrade possibilities here for the Carillion Recon, I went into the propulsion system, and I saw that there is a unique bit here that says increases ship evasion by 8%. So it's got high evasion already, and we can make it higher. 
And then there's a strategy, the evasive maneuvers strategy. When the ship's HP falls to 20%, it increases evasion by 50% for 40 seconds. This effect only triggers once per battle. Now, what I then did was essentially I thought to myself, right, okay, so it's got terrible armor and lower HP compared to the FG300A, but it's not getting hit. This is kind of like, I suppose, speed tanking in Eve Echoes, and I wonder how that works here in Infinite Lagrange. So, I built a fleet of 10 Carillion Recon Frigates and 5 Reliats. And then I built a fleet of 10 FG300As and 5 Reliats, and I sent them both against some pirate fleets that were nearby. The FG300s did admirably, as you'd expect them to. They absorbed a lot of damage. A few of them got blown up. I say a few of them, I think six or seven of them got blown up, and thus I had to replace those once that fleet came back to port. The Carillion Recon fleet, however, lost one ship. That one ship was destroyed, and one of the other Carillions was on about 80%, 80 to 90% HP at the end of that fight. I then repaired that Carillion, and I sent that same fleet back out against another pirate, uh, pirate fleet, another privateer fleet, and I watched what was happening. And two things I noticed. One, it took ages for those pirates to actually hit an F uh, one of the Carillion recons. It took ages for them to actually hit it and do any form of damage whatsoever. It took ages to get it down to 20%, and once it hit 20% and that special manu that evasive maneuvers tactic um, came into play, suddenly nothing was hitting it. That full 40 second window happened with that one ship taking literally no damage. Its health did not move. At the end of that 40 seconds, yeah, eventually the recon frigate died and the next one started getting shot at and missing. The bottom line was that not only was the Carillion recon frigate doing more damage to the enemy fleet while it was alive, thanks to having a higher firepower stat, the evasion meant that it wasn't taking any damage at all. Like, literally, the difference between the FG300A and the Carillion recon was astonishing in my mind. To the point that nowadays, if I jump into my base and I show you the big fleet that I actually use for killing off pirates going into Scattered Belts, my Frigate Destroyer fleet here, you'll see I do not use the FG300 armor at all anymore. The Carillion Recon is my front row Frigate tank and it protects my Reliats admirably. And I don't remember the last time I actually lost one of these because the DPS on the back of this is insane. And basically you are killing fleets long before they can actually successfully kill the first Reliat. They are struggling to hit it so badly. Because let's be honest, when it comes to looking at a blueprint and choosing what stats we're going to go for, when we start looking at our different destroyers and things like that, we like to look at those big numbers for damage, right? That means that people pump up the damage and enhance the damage of their different ships, but they don't bother increasing the hit rate for the most part. And so those Carillions just dance around every shot that comes their way and leave the end of the battle with none of them being destroyed. Every shot that was fired at a Carillion was pretty much wasted. Very few of the shots landed, and the few that did still get absorbed by armor. And if you're lucky enough to have a few things like Tundras and that around, well, anything that's going to be repairing your Carillions is going to keep them alive even longer than your FG300s. I absolutely love this ship. Yes, I was biased, I wanted a reason to love it, and I went looking, but I think I found something really admirable in this ship, and something that means that I genuinely believe it is massively underrated. I got rid of my FG300As and replaced them with Carillion Recons, and my fleets have been doing so much better, and hopefully, me waxing lyrical in this video about how, why I love this ship and why I think it's awesome might inspire you guys to try it out and give it a go yourself. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. Let me know how well you get on with the Carillion Recon Frigate. Yeah, I'm still looking forward to the heavy cannon type and seeing what happens there, but for the most part, this is one of my favorite ships in the entirety of Infinite Lagrange. Thanks for watching this one right the way to the end, folks. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Happy sailing, and see you in Infinite Lagrange!